Hello, I'm Isaiah, I'm one of the 3D MPIs here at the Hive, and today I'll be showing you guys how to use the Formlabs uh, 3D printers for the Hive. Uh, right now we currently have two, we will most likely have three in an upcoming semester, so just be ready for that. Both will probably be in a similar layout, so everything in this video should work, just expand it to one more printer. Alright, so these printers are our resin printers here at the Hive. They do um, a lot of very high detailed prints that can have a bunch of different material qualities than your normal printers. So they, as you can see, they print with a build plate that dips into a vat of resin, and then the, a laser below will cure the resin onto the build plate. And so that's important to remember is that every, this entire like, resin system is going to be toxic to your skin, and so it's always important to practice good safety procedures when working with these printers. So most importantly is to have safety gloves and safety goggles on whenever you are handling prints. We keep those currently over here. And so whatever you're going to do anything with these printers, just come over here, grab some gloves, grab some goggles, put them on, just to be safe. So to start a print on these, you'll see their label for 5 percent one Gucci, and presumably we'll have another one. So you're going to make sure you cue your print to those. This will be covered in the software video, which should be attached to this video as well. And you're going to come to this menu screen right over here, so you can see that this is the print menu. So if I wanted to print this piece, I'd press print and it would queue it up to the printer and that is how I would start a print. Now before we do that, there's a couple things you always want to check. And so make sure the build plate is attached so you can see there's a little latch. I'll hook it up so you can get a better view. So there's a little latch up here. You can unlatch it and just slide it back on, relatch, and that's how you attach the build plate. And the other thing to make sure is done before you have a print is up here. There's This is the resin cartridge. It holds the resin. And you want to make sure this little um, cap is open. Now, uh, we're not going to be starting a print on here because that would take a bit too long for the video, but I'll show you if, a, if say I just did this print and it had just finished, this is my procedures of what I would do next as a PI. So first, you're going to make sure gloves, safe glasses, you're going to open up the printer right here, and then the print is going to be on this base. So all you're going to do first is say, okay, this resin is opaque. We'll have it labeled, we have two washes. One is for opaque and the other is for clear resin. We will have the, also the types of resin labeled on the top so that you can see it very clearly and you won't have to remember this. And then you're just going to press open. So you're going to open the wash. Once it's open, you're going to take your build plate off. I like the little worker because it sometimes the resin that's a little bit different from the bottom. And you're going to move it into the wash station. And then you would press start and you start it for the amount of time equal to the actual print that we're going to be doing. And you can use the little knob. But since, of course, we don't need to wash anything, uh, we're just going to simulate that by saying, oh, we just wash it. So it goes down and it'll come back up. This, like, it'll have just finished, and we'll be able to take it out. And then the important thing is, is you're going to make sure you want to remove the pieces from the bottom of the build plate before we cure it. Because now that we've, the plate has been washed, but we need to remove the pieces. So usually, uh, we'd have a paper towel, but I currently don't see it because I'm recording this at the end of the semester. So we're going to simulate it with um, this Taj Mahal. <laughs> so I take out the pieces. Um, so this, you can see it has a flex tray. And so not all of them will have flex trays, but this one does. And so you can hold like this, and that will pop the pieces right off onto like a paper towel is what you'd want under here. If it doesn't have a flex tray, you're going to grab a scraper that is labeled for resin, and you're just going to scrape it off and then put it onto the tray. Once you've scraped the pieces off, you're going to leave them on the paper towel, and you're going to take the bill plate, make sure it looks pretty nice and clean, because usually the cleaner should get most of it, but if there is anything gone, you can just take it under the paper towel, and maybe some IPA, spray it down, and then wipe it off. Once you've done that, you put it back in, just like I showed you earlier, slide it under there, wash it down, boom, piece back in. And you also want to make sure you put your wash to sleep. Now the last step, once you have those pieces, uh, you still can have them, so make sure you're still wearing gloves and safety glasses. You open up the cure station. As you can see, this is the cure station. We have it labeled for the amounts of time and temperature for each piece. Since we were just working on white resin, we're going to pretend we have white resin in here. We're going to open this up. We take our part. Let's pretend we're still working with this guy over here. We're going to put him in the cure station. Close the cure station. We're going to check that we have it for 30 minutes and 60 degrees, which is correct for white. You can change it by just pressing. And then we'd press start, which would start the curing process and cure our part. And that'd be pretty much everything you need for the normal processes of doing a print. Uh, that cures it, and once it's cured, you can take it out and just put it onto the shelves and be ready for a um, person to pick up. Okay, so some other quick things to note is that when the washer is done, it will automatically open once the time is out. So don't leave because we don't want to leave it open 
because it just makes, uh, gets rid of some of the IPA and it's not good for our washers. Um, some other things is sometimes a re your resin will run out, like your printer will run out of resin. It's very easy to deal with that. It'll usually give you a warning around here. As you can see, the cartridge is currently pretty close to full, but if it wasn't, we'd, uh, it, we'd have to switch it out. So how you do that is up here, remember I showed you this cartridge earlier? You can literally just pull it out, and then you get a new one from wherever they are. Currently they're stored under the desk. There's some tape on the top and the bottom here. You take the piece of the tape off, and you can just slide it back in, and bam, you've refilled the resin tank. Other things that may happen is you may get a, uh, your tray down here if someone wants a new type of resin. Generally, we don't switch out resins during a semester just because it's a lot harder to do the tray. So make sure that if you're replacing a tank, you, it matches the amount of the same type of resin that's in the tray down here. But if someone were, was to ask, make sure to put it in the chat and we can, you know, talk, the MPIs will look at and see if we want to switch out resin types. But generally, we'll have the same resin types, currently two, probably three for next semester that we always have. Now, make sure that you switch gloves out regularly when handling resin. So if you ever have to um, drop something down or use like touch, like a control panel or something else like that, always feel free. You can take gloves off, throw them away. Oh, we have so many gloves, so don't worry about, you know, using too, many, too much gloves. If you have to switch gloves, always be real to switch gloves. All right. Now that I've shown you the hardware for the Formlabs printers, we're now going to segue over into the software for the Formlabs printers. This is the Preform software. So this is the screen that you'll be greeted with when you start up Preform. It has the logo of this little butterfly kind of looking icon in the menu. So if you're ever trying to find the software, it looks like this. You'll be greeted with this screen. This is the representation of where your model will go and the build plate that it goes on. And so in order to load a model into this software, you're gonna go first to file and you're gonna click open. So this will bring you to a the file screen and so you can find your file. For me, I'm gonna find this 3D Benji. And it'll say something like this usually, just click repair and it'll load it right in. So you can see here, we have our 3D Benchy loaded in. You can select it. You can you select with left click and uh, drag around with right click. So we have our 3D Benchy here and you can see uh, some basic things is in the right menu, we have our information. So I don't have a printer connected right now, but when you're in, you'll see two different printers. And through that, you can see the material. We're currently printing in white V4 with layer thickness of 0.1 millimeters and default print settings. You can click this to change. So there'll be printers right here that you can switch between. You can change your material. Always make sure the material is matching the material of the printer you are selecting. And you can change your layer thickness. Um, the higher the layer thickness, the longer, uh, the quicker it'll print, but the less detail it'll be. So if you want a really detailed print, you need higher detail, you can go to 0.05. It'll just make it means it takes longer. So generally we keep it on 0.1 millimeters. And you can always hit apply when you're done. Also has a time estimate, which is how long this print is estimated to take, the number of layers, and the amount of um, like actual resin that is being used in the print. You also see um, errors. So since we have a printability error, because we don't have any supports, and then there's also minima and cups, which currently we have none of, but these are errors that you want to avoid. I'll go into those more later. And then on the left side of the screen, you have your settings for actually manipulating the print. So this is one click print, which I would recommend not using. I'll get into that right now. Because if I click this, I can, it's supposed to be like a thing that will automatically set up prints like quickly and well, but it usually it does not set up them well. And so you can see kind of why it doesn't set them up well, like this, it just flips it upside down and that is not optimal for actually printing. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to get rid of this and I will reflip it using a tool that I will show you guys in a bit. It's the orientation. I can select base and orient to face. But before we get to that, there's first our next menu below the one click print, which you should probably not use, is size. So size is pretty self-explanatory. You can click the model you want and you can edit the size of it through these arrows. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can edit or edit certain axes, stuff like that. Okay, so the next menu below that is orientation. You can reorientate selected, which is, again, usually would not use. Uh, what I use the most is select base. Uh, this allows you to select a specific face of the print and move it to the base. So for instance, if I selected 
the top of this little smokestack thing here, it would now move to the bottom of the build plate. And remember, for resin printers, they're built from the pr from the build plate go dips down into the vat of resin and is cured with the laser. So in this case, this would be what was holding my entire print up, which is not very good. So I'm going to go back to this base here. I can also orient to different axes or orient to bounding boxes. So for instance, I orient to this bounding box, it flips that base there. I can orient to this bounding box, just like that. Next, we're on to supports. So generally, auto generate select is actually an option that you can use for supports. It will create just supports all around the piece and that'll make sure it doesn't fall into the battle liquid. You may have to edit some of these a bit and I'll show you more settings in that once this loads. It usually will take a little while to load. All right, so that finished. So here you can see it generates a full raft for the piece down here. This is optimal for printability as it really makes it a lot easier to remove since these will really just snap right off and that makes it really nice and simple. As you can see, the auto generate does a pretty good job of making sure everything's supported. There's no islands, nothing like that. Uh, an island is basically a piece that is hanging off and not connected. There's none on the benchy and this orientation at least. But generally, if you see something that's hanging off and not connected to the print, it will fall off when it's actually being printed. So you want to support connected to that. The one main issue you may have with uh, auto generated supports is this or these supports inside here, they're internal supports and they can be a real pain to remove from certain pieces or maybe you don't want supports on the inside of something. And so in order to get rid of those, you can click this little toggle down here, which is internal supports. Turn that off, you can regenerate. And what this will do, and it loads in a sec, I'll get back to you then. Yep, okay, so loaded, yep, you can see that it removed the supports from the interior. Now, however, you can see there's this little red coloration here and a lot more here that means it's detecting uh you know things that you may want more supports on in the print now i know that the benchy is actually fine without it however if you want to add supports you can click edit and this will allow you to manually place supports so if i wanted just one support there because i'm like okay i can remove one support i'm gonna place that and then we'll have to turn some supports back on while i'm manually placing so i can place that there and then say i want another one here I click apply, and boom, now I've got supports there and there. Not like the whole forest that was there earlier, but at least I know that it's a bit extra safe. There are some more advanced settings like spacing, multiply, you won't really have to mess with these, just know that if someone asked to set it up, these are here, and that's basically the support settings. Last is layout. So layout is pretty important in the form labs because it really determines how quickly um, your piece is printed. The is a laser in the form labs that moves along the mixer direction. And so if you put it on this axis, it'll print out a lot quicker than if you put it on the other axis. So again, I can kind of give a demonstration here where if I move this all the way kind of over here-ish and I do a three hour print, it's two hours, 35 minutes. Or if I move it here and then I hit a rotate real quick I think that, that, that's good-ish. Move it right there along the mixer. And then I do this again. Boom. I saved a little bit of time. Not like, you know, obviously in a piece that's pretty short like this, I'm not going to save you a whole large amount of time. However, it will save you time in larger pieces. And if you're scraping to get like a couple extra minutes, good to put, put it up here first. So with layout, you can do layout all, which will kind of like do a quick layout, kind of putting it in a basic position. This is not terrible. It's not totally optimized, but it's not terrible. You can duplicate pieces. So if I wanted two, three, I could duplicate extra amounts. Just delete those by pressing, clicking them and then pressing the delete key. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do here. Like you can mirror, which just flips it. I can overlap rafts if I have multiple pieces, they have them connect in rafts. Stuff like that. So that's the layout. The last thing you'll really need here is uh, the print. So obviously one of the most important things is the print. There'll obviously be the printer here. It should match the printer you set it up with because it's not, you'll have to redo settings because different resin types are different and need to be set up differently. You will have your job name. So this we will use our standard um, naming format that we use for the form and saving to the archive, which are two very important things. So for me, it is MPI 
Isaiah Bailey Vinci. It's always your status. So if you're, I'm an MPI, so I put MPI. If you're a PI, well, if you're watching this, you are a PI. So you put PI. If it's for um, someone random, you don't put anything there. You just put their first name, last name, as I would put my first name, last name, and then you put a little description of what the part. In this case, it is a Vinci. And then you'd be able to click Upload Job here, and that would send it directly to the printer. A couple of other important things just to touch on is when saving it to the archive, you're going to use File here, and then Save As, and you'll navigate to the archive as we have shown before. All right, and one last thing to touch on is cups. So cups are when a pocket of air or resin is formed in your piece. You may get like a warning that says a cups detected. Do not print with cups detected because it will cause it to usually fall off of the build plate as there'll be the suction force from the cup and the, and the build plate moving up and down in the liquid will usually rip the piece off or cause other errors. A good way to get rid of a cup is to just quickly rotate the piece 15 degrees or so, kind of like so, and you'll have to regenerate supports. However, it will help you get rid of the cups as usually just rotate it until it says cups are no longer detected. All right, so that's the tutorial for the preform software. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to an MPI